guys, what's up and welcome back to another video. For the sign of the day, I have this candle from the burlap bag and it's called I Leaf Fall and it smells really good. If you're new around here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you will never miss anything interesting. And I also do post every single day on Reddit and on Instagram, so if you like new daily update content, be sure to go follow me over on there. So welcome my friends to another Sunday video where we do an overview and a tutorial on the palette of the week. And here you can see I'm holding the palette of the week in my hands. Now there was a little controversy with this palette, meaning that when you look at this palette, it looks kind of beige. But when you apply it on your eyes, it's very grayscale. And that is very much the case. This palette is a color story dupe for the Natasha Denona Glam palette. The Natasha Denona cost $65 and this one only cost $14. So you kind of just gauge what you want to spend your money on. And I did just want to mention something really quick before we get started. And that's I am having a real bad issue with it, this whole eye today. When I was getting ready for this video, I just randomly got allergic to something and then my whole eye started tearing up and then it went completely completely swollen. I had to wait hours before I can film my video and I took some medicine and it finally just started to calm down a little bit but it's still very sensitive. So I think we're gonna be working on this eye today even though this is my bad eye but I really don't have an option so so without too much chatter let's go right ahead on into this overview. Hey guys, welcome to the overview. This is the palette we're going to be talking about today. This is called the ColourPop That's Taupe palette. And I don't know if the lighting's picking it up, but it does have a foiled faux snakeskin packaging. And the interior does not have a mirror inside. And looking inside at the color story, you can see that there's nine shades in this palette. There are five mattes, three metallics, and one super shock shadow. The ColourPop matte formula is just decent. And that's how I like to think about it. It's not the best formula, but it does blend fast and it does blend easily. But what I don't like about them is that they do not layer really well. So I always have a hard time trying to build a color with them. The metallics in this palette are really nice. They all have a base pigment, so you can really do a lot with them. They're all very smooth, but they do have a drier like texture. And using the metallics in here, I was able to work in very tiny spaces, but still be able to get the pigment that I was wanting. And the last shade is the Super Shock Shadow, and you can see that's right here. And in my opinion, these kind of shadows don't belong in palettes because I'm having issues with this one just flaking on itself all over all the other shadows in this palette. It's very, very, very soft in texture and it's almost cream-like in consistency. Now the Super Shock does not have a base pigment so you can use it as a really brilliant sparkling topper on any shade in this palette that you want. So it's very versatile when you want to think of it like that. But as for standing the test of time, I don't think it's truly a shadow that's going to outlive any other one in this palette. I do really, really like the nice light to dark gradient in this palette. And right now I'm going to pop up some swatches on the screen so you can see what all these shadows look like swatched out. Okay, now I'm going to give you some information about this palette and some interesting things to think about. ColourPop created this palette in order to give you the ability to go from an everyday glam look to a very smoky eye. So it contains all the shades you need to be able to do something like that. And on their website, they describe this palette as being so dope. So make of that what you will. This palette is cruelty free, but it is not vegan. And now let's get into the cost. This entire palette costs $14 if you want to buy it from the ColourPop website today. And if you break that down a little bit further, you're paying $1.56 per shadow. And breaking that down even further, you're gonna be paying $1.56 per gram. And the look that I got when I used this palette, I really did enjoy. I didn't get any creasing or patchiness. The shadows in this palette produced moderate kick up and I did get some fallout on my face. So I definitely recommend doing your eyes before your base when you're using this. And if you're on the fence about buying this, I definitely recommend it. Now let's get right into the tutorial. Hey guys, welcome to the second part of this video, the tutorial. And today we're going to create an oval blend out cut crease. And I love creating this type of shadow look. This is one of my favorite techniques to use. And once you get this technique under your belt, you can just knock these kind of looks out super quick. 
So let me scoot you in a little bit closer and we'll get right into it. So I'm still gonna try to use this eye even though it's a little irritated with me, but we'll just see what happens. You can tell it's a little bit red and kind of mad at me. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and tight line first. And for this step, I'm gonna use my Marc Jacobs highlighter and blacker. And now we're gonna move right into applying our eye base. And for this, I'm using the Revlon Candid Concealer, like always. And I'm just going to put a few dots on my eyelid and blend them out with a fluffier type brush. Alright, now we're ready to get started with the shadow. So may I suggest starting out with two brushes. The first being a tiny detail brush. And I prefer this one from Black Opal. And I really think this is a lip brush, but it works perfectly for what I need it to. And then the second brush is a small dome blender, and this one is the Jessup 244, and I got this on eBay. And this is by far one of my favorite brushes in my collection, it is so good. And I just have something like this on my table. And what I use this for is in between shadows, I wipe my brush on here, and this collects all the color from my brush, so I can easily switch colors into another shadow. And there's many different options of these that you can get. This one just came in a set that I got one day, so I still use it. Opening up the palette, we're gonna hit the shade Bedrock first. And what we're gonna do with this shade is we're gonna start in the middle of our eye and make a little oval on the outer corner. It doesn't have to be perfect at first because you can clean it up. So just try your best to make that shape. And then Keep edging it out so it kind of looks more oval as you go. Now once you have your ovals on there, you can go ahead and fill them in. So you're just using that same shadow and just filling in this outer corner with that dark bedrock shade. Now after you fill them in, now we get to blend it out. So start at the edge and make little teeny circles all around the border of the shadow. You really want to fluff out this line, that harsh line that we created. Alright, now we're ready to move on to our next shade. And the one we're going to be picking up is called Rock Study. Coat your detail brush with that one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this along the harsh edge of the shade we just laid down. So literally just outline that same border with this new shade. The next step is to blend out the second shade. So do the same thing you did with the first one. All right, now we have one more shade to go. And this one is called Pebble Beach. Just think of this as laying the foundation for the look. And we're gonna stick this shade right on the outer edge of the second shade. When you get finished applying the third shade, go ahead and give that a last good blend out. All right guys, now we get to have some fun because it's time for the cut crease. And for my cut crease, I'm gonna use two things. The first thing being the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer. This is like the best cut crease base ever. And then the second thing being this really tiny brush like you see right here. And again, I got this one on eBay. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the crease in a normal manner, nothing special about this one, and then we're gonna apply shadow on top of it. All right, now the next step is applying the fun colors on the lid. And for this, I like to use a small packing brush like this one. And we're gonna start with the shade Constrictor first. And what I'm gonna do with that shade is start halfway on the center of my eye and just pack it on the exterior part of this cut crease. Now once you have the green metallic applied, now we get to go into the Super Shock. And this one does pick up better on your finger, but I do not like to use my fingers for eyeshadow looks. I just try my best to get as much on the brush as I can, and then I just use the brush to pack it gently in this inner portion of the cut crease. And now when you have as much on there as possible, what you're gonna do is you're gonna load up your brush with some more of that Super Shock, and you're gonna gently swipe it over the green, just lightly. So it should look like that. You have your green, your Super Shock, and then the transition in the center. And now for this next step, I like to take one of these kind of stubby looking brushes and I dip back into bedrock. And then I lightly tap on the edge of the green where the green hits the darkest gray. And kind of blend that in to the outer corner. For this next step, you're gonna wanna grab a dark gray eyeliner. You can also use any eyeliner you want, but I just found dark gray looks pretty cool with this look. And I'm using the MAC Technical Eyeliner in Coin Operated. And I'm just gonna go ahead and line my lower waterline with this. And now we get to start under shadow. Like always, I'm gonna go into my favorite pencil brush. And I'm gonna go into the shade called Pebble Beach first. Now with the shade, I'm gonna start in the inner corner and go all the way to about three quarters of the way. And I'm gonna grab some more shadow if needed to make it a little bit darker. And now I'm dipping in to bedrock and this is what's gonna connect our lower lash line with the top shadow. So start at that little quarter inch and connect it to where it comes down around the top. And now a really fun part for this lower lash line, I'm just taking a little tiny fluffy detail brush and I'm going into the shade called Cold Blooded and I'm just building that gently on my brush and I tapped it off. And now I'm just lightly putting this on top of those shadows that we put on the lower lash line. Now we can't forget to do our inner corner and brow bone. So I'm taking my favorite brush I use for that and I'm going into the shade Cold Blooded and I'm just going to stamp that on my inner corner. Now get some more on your brush, tap it off, and then put it in your little brow bone area. Make sure you give that a good blend too. 
Now I'm gonna go see about some mascara and I shall return. Okay, so here it is. Here's the final look using the ColourPop That's Taupe palette. Even though my eyes been irritated this entire time, I still think it turned out pretty well. And I had an absolute blast making this video. So always let me know in the comments down below if this is a palette that you own or if it's a palette that you're looking into. So that is all I have for you today. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, hit the thumbs down button. And until next time, 